Okay. Okay. Good morning, Trevor. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice to nice to meet you, and nice to have you on Continental Conversations here at SWA. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank you. Yeah. Good to meet you too. Good. Good. So. Um, Trevor, you're a founder of um, SA, uh, an amazing international brand um, that has become um, a brand over the past few years that's available in so many uh, countries, I think up to 40 countries, um, and is also one of the most talked about innovative brands out there coming out of Africa, um, and, and you are you are um, you have an organic brand that also has natural biotechnology in it and certified credentials using effective um, ingredients. But first of all, we want to know a bit more about the man behind the brand. So um, could you tell us a bit about you, Trevor, just so we have an idea of who you are and what brought you to this? Just give us a, a background. Thanks. Uh... Um, well, I guess I mean, my mother was a primary school teacher, my father was an electrician, um, and I grew up in a very small little coastal town in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess nothing amazing in my childhood years, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think I found my passion in uh, at university chemistry came easily for me and i was lucky that way um and i had one german professor who really drew me into into organic chemistry in particular um and i spent the bulk of my 20s doing research on indigenous medicinal plants uh, we were looking for new pharmaceuticals from indigenous plants in in the province that we live in um, just kwazulu natal has such incredible biodiversity we have 11 times more tree species than the whole whole of europe combined for example um, amazing so we sit on this beautiful biodiversity and uh, yeah we were looking for some way to make that important so that uh, it wasn't destroyed for monoculture yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly and of course we'll come back to that in regards to climate change and how that's affecting you but okay great great so um so what was your inspiration to start the skincare range and and, and why organic um yeah, actually, I was I was recently described as a competitive hippie. Uh, <laughs> so interesting. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think that was just me. Um, you know, to some extent, I, 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 you know, I spent a lot of my childhood barreling around in the coastal bush and surfing, and you know, it was. I, I think any human would look at a diverse ecology as more beautiful uh you know when we go on holiday we don't go and park in a wheat field uh you know we we go somewhere diverse and vibrant um, yes yes and uh yeah i guess i guess i just wanted to promulgate that somehow um and and it is it has been that focus on diversity on on re retaining biodiversity and trying to hold on to the systems that gave birth to humankind, I guess, you know, and, and, and I think, yeah, I think that's just, it's, it's just part of my drive. And I, I and that was, was a learning that happened in chemistry, weirdly enough, um, okay. that synergy is not easy to model. Uh, so yeah, when, when, you know, when you try to treat a human being with a single chemical, it can often give you surprising unintended consequences. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's probably because everyone's so different, right? So you've got to find the right. Um... Yeah. I think we've, I've always looked back to where we come from, you know, how we evolved um, and, and how do we best mimic those conditions? Because it's, it's all, humans really want is what we've evolved for. Um, yeah. And we didn't evolve for new synthetic chemicals. 
you know, we we evolved for life in in a diverse and uh, you know and 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 beautiful space. Um, yeah. Look, I, I, I know we can't all live as hunter gatherers now. No, no. <laughs> And we can't also, and, and I think also, I, yeah, exactly. And mimicking also, like you said, the whole sort of um, nature and bringing that into, you know, adapting that to the brand is very important as well um, yeah. for the sustainability part of, of, of the company. Um, so SE, now the name itself. So let's, let's dive into that. Um, the name has a special meaning. Um, which you can tell us about and, and what is it and why do you call why did you call it SA skincare? Well, uh, I mean it means to be in Latin. Um, but uh, yeah, you know to be to be honest, it was uh, I, I had no idea it was going to get this big to be honest. <laughs> I thought it would be a, a, a relatively small little company that would be a hobby. Um, and uh, I remember when we first decided to start selling products in Johannesburg, my mother was like, whoa, hey, hey, now that you're expanding beyond your, you know, it's like you can't sell in the whole of South Africa. Maybe you should just focus on Devon. Wow, amazing. But, uh, yeah, so I guess I guess the, the things expanded beyond what I thought it would, and we have come across the odd trademark issue and yeah but it's uh the names the name and the logo actually uh you know have have remained pretty much consistent the whole way through and it's um yeah i think it's maybe uh yeah maybe an extension of 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 just being and doing so in a mm -hmm. cognizant kind of way yeah yeah. And also maybe a bit about seeing the vision and then working towards that, as in you work backwards. Yeah. Because it seems that, that because when you mentioned like, you know, the, the brand and the name is still and the logo is still the same and, you know, and yet you've expanded so much. I think that's also part of the vision, uh, which SE has, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's been nearly 20 years now, uh, you know, um, and look, I was terrible at selling skincare to start off with I can tell you that much <laughs> maybe maybe not so bad at formulating but selling I was really bad <laughs> I can imagine oh, oh. Yeah. well we all learn we all have our our you know strengths so um, yours is chemistry which you've really done well um, so do you have that aha eureka moment in your business career that still gives you that you know smile that happy moment yeah you know i think i think right here in these laboratories i uh, well it was only one laboratory and it was uh, it was a lot less populated it was just me i was i was in the lab on a sunday afternoon and uh, i finally uh, figured out how to uh, encapsulate our probiotics so that they wouldn't die in a, in, in in our formulations um, and I do remember doing a little dance, uh, and, uh, and my neighbor's a, a beekeeper and he happened to pop over for tea while I was <laughs> you were dancing, you thought, what is this nutter doing? Right. Yeah. Must be yeah. the chemicals in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. good. That that's was good. that 2015 product formulation, the probiotic serum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I won't ask you to do the dance for us, so I'll spare you that today. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that, you know, you already mentioned challenges early on, and I wanted to ask about, you know, every business has its challenges, of course, and obstacles, which gave you the most headaches. Uh, how did you overcome those as well? So... You know, I, I didn't, I certainly didn't leave university thinking that I was going to start a skincare company. And, mm -hmm. and, and like I said, it took me, I, I mean, I, my wife and I grew vegetables in these hills for a decade before I finally started a business. But mm -hmm. when I did, I really wanted it to be an alternative to business as usual. 
Um, mm -hmm. I didn't start a skincare brand to to make money or to, I, it was just I realized that nobody cared that we were sustainable and growing veg vegetables in the hills. Uh, it made no difference. The mm -hmm. world barreled on regardless. Uh, yeah. What I wanted to do was to create a company that showed that a sustainable business could could be successful. Mm -hmm. um, and the challenging part of that is, is that as soon as you bring shareholders in, uh, they buy in for profit. Uh, they don't buy in for anything else. Mm. So mm. I, haven't, I haven't brought shareholders in. And what mm -hmm. that means is that the company's grown slowly, mm -hmm. uh, really slowly. You know, for a company that's been going for 20 years, you know, if we were, if we'd adopted the American model of, of venture capital and then round A, round B, you know, and, and then listing on the stock exchanges and, you know, we mm -hmm. would have grown miles faster. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess in an, in an effort to retain that integrity, you know, retain uh, that clarity of decision making that where you know where every decision made was made around sustainability for both the planet and the client mm -hmm. uh, you know that, that that i think would have been very difficult with shareholders but what it's meant is that we've been in this sort of constant minor cash flow issue because we haven't brought in these big tranches of capital that really would have put us on steroids you know, mm -hmm. you know? and and now as you know the scene's changing obviously in more sustainability is, you know, people are becoming more aware, um, not just governments or businesses, but also the financial institutions that would you then consider um, the financial institutions again, who think more sustainably or who've changed their mindsets actually towards a more sustainable kind of, um, you know, long-term thinking, not the short-term profits like you you once, you know, were, were facing, yeah. You know, call me cynical, but <laughs> the financial system that got us into this, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, and, and I understand there are, there is an effort to change. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't have faith in, uh, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not looking for shareholders at all. And yeah. I, 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 yeah for now until, until until i'm convinced otherwise <laughs> it's a good good just just asking the question so that we understand further yeah good okay so what true um benefits of probiotic skincare which you mentioned earlier um are compared to normal natural plant-based skincare products um you know, I think I think that, that was another pivotal moment in the in the company is that you know, in, up to, up until around 2010, uh, there were we we really you know we used uh, the biodiversity of Africa, mm -hmm. um, which we believed was underutilized, um, and we were we were taking individual ec extracts from a range of plants and using them. Um, in skincare, and they work. You know that 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 was that was very successful for us. But when when the Human Microbiome Project launched, uh, I was faced with a, with a substantial shift um, as a chemist. You know, uh, we'd always understood a human being as one thing. You know, we always thought, oh, there's a human. Um, and what the Human Microbiome Project showed was that uh, there's an ecology of microbes and a human. Um, and as soon as you realize that, it took, I fought it like hell, by the way. I was, I, I, I was calling bullshit. <laughs> Just like, but when, when, when it became clear, uh, I, I had to shift my entire headspace because once you understand a human being as a deeply complex ecology, you realize that treating it with single molecules is probably not the way to go. You know, every time we've tried to treat a complex ecology in nature with a single molecule, like DDT, for example, 
there are unintended consequences. You may have a, a, a beneficial short-term result, but the long-term results are always compromised in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that's when I realized that the, the way to, to, to look at, at treating a human being was, was in, a, in a slightly different way. You should be looking at nudging the ecology rather than just treating a, 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 a human. Uh, you're not treating an individual, you're treating thousands of species. Right. Um, and the, the best way I could see to do that was using probiotics. Um, and to be honest, I think we got a little bit lucky. <laughs> uh, our first, the yeah. first product that we tested uh, gave in, in very impressive results. So we test, we test in Bonn in Germany and uh, we tested on a, on a panel of um, 20 women and okay. we had really strong anti-wrinkle results. We had really strong firming and elasticity results. So uh, yeah, it, it, the probiotics work. Um, and you know, we showed that pretty convincingly in 2015 already, yeah. That must be, I mean, that must have been an amazing moment as well for you to celebrate. I mean, that is just uh, like, you know, a light bulb moment. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, the testing is super expensive for Can us. You know? So, you know, when, when, when you spend that much on testing uh, mm -hmm. and you get results back that are positive, it is quite exciting because, the, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest, the previous two times that we tested, we got nothing. Uh, right. So, but you still had to pay for the testing. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, of course. Of the course. nice Germans, they don't uh, fudge results. <laughs> <laughs> they just go, that was crap. Try again. <laughs> Try again. Yeah. Come back again. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, so according to your research, um, what is the biggest threat for the um, microbiome on your skin? And why is it important to restore the microbe on your skin? So, uh, yeah, you know, I think, I think the biggest threat for us in, in terms of the skin microbiome is that, you know, through human evolution, we've co-evolved with our microbes. Um, we've outsourced tasks to our microbes and we've, uh, we've, you know, we're a very neatly uh, and, and, carefully knitted bunch of, of, of organisms um, that have been successful. Then in the last hundred years or so, we suddenly change our behavior, very, very violent um, antibiotics, soap use, you know, these, they're, they're, they're big changes. Um, and they've resulted in the loss of a lot of our microbial partners. Um, I think what's going to happen, we're going to realize that that's hurting us. I mean, you can already see it. Uh, acne doesn't really occur in hunter gatherers. Uh, and now it's happening in 85% of teenagers. Um, mm -hmm. Eczema and other inflammatory skin diseases, you also, you don't see these in, in people living a traditional lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we're battling now uh, and in battling at in, 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 in an increasing rate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's because we've lost these key microbial partners. Um, I think what's going to be really, really hard is getting them back. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Because we've become used to a different way. Yeah, I mean, you look at you look at a you look at a natural ecology. For example, you can drive a bulldozer through a forest um, and then farm it for a few years, and then when you try to get it back. Uh, maybe you can replant the trees and then wait 20 years or 30 years or longer while these trees, you know, rebuild the ecology. But how do you get back the insects that pollinate that tree? Yeah. They're gone. I mean, yeah. we don't have resources of those. We of can't, insects. Like, no, um, we don't. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how do we, and so what, how, when, when it comes time to repopulate our skins, where are we going to go? Are we going to go find the last remaining hunter gatherers and ask nicely, uh, you know, where, how are we going to get these partners back? Cause mm -hmm. it's clear that we've lost a lot of them. Uh, mm -hmm. We've just done a study here. So I, I've, and I've grown up amongst the Zulu people. Um, so we, we, we check, 
we checked the, the skin microbiome of Zulu people who are working in an agricultural space. And then we checked the skin microbiome of Zulu people who work in a factory environment. Mm -hmm. The difference is enormous. I mean, you have double the number of species growing on the skins of the agricultural workers in comparison to the factory workers. Wow. And, and, and that's, you know, that's, that, it's, it's huge. You know, so if, if we've lost a third to a half of our skin microbiome, um, I, I think it's a really interesting question how on earth we plan on getting that back. Yeah. Yeah. And protecting ourselves, obviously, from, from, you know, all, all these diseases, of course, that, you know, and you see a lot of people also getting allergic reactions today, uh, skin reactions. Yeah. I mean, it's your skin microbiome that educates your skin's immune system to go, hey, this is worth responding to. This is, mm -hmm. this isn't. Um, so these allergic reactions are the result of, an, of, a, of a skin immune system that isn't well educated. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, it hasn't had this constant flux of, mm. of microbes from nature. All it's ever exposed to are other human microbes. So mm. it responds badly to what aren't really threats. Yeah. 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 That's food for thought, definitely. Um, and, and what about the um, certification? Do you think um, has reflected the credibility of your product ethic and your ingredient formulation uh, the most? Um, look, the organic certification, we've been certified organic since 2004. Um, and the standards have changed. Uh, and, and as you know, as, as, as the industry has evolved, um, I do believe that, 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 that that's really important. Um, you know, initially being a little bit of an anti-establishment kind of human, I, I, you know, I resented being audited, you know, because I felt I was doing the right thing and, uh, you know, but the, it's really, really important, you know, as the company scales to have oversight, to have an auditor that looks into the sustainability of the packaging, looks mm -hmm. into, uh, you know, the sourcing of the raw materials looks into palm oil as an issue. And, you know, it's, it's, it is important. Um, recently, we've put a lot of focus on our carbon neutral certifications. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, because that industry is so badly regulated, we internally audit, audit there. Um, okay. And initially what we did is we did what any business would do. And we looked at our operation here and went, well, what's the carbon load? And we offset that. Um, okay. But now we've started looking all the way back into, into our supply chain. Um, so we look at the embodied carbon in every input now. So if we get our glass from Italy, um, then we look at the glass production process and we buy carbon offsets for that whole process. We offset the transport to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we offset our manufacturing carbon as well. And then our, again, our offset of transport to wherever the, the goods end up. Um, mm -hmm. So we are carbon neutral the whole way through our, our supply chain. Um, which involves a lot of bureaucracy, uh, but is, I, I believe, worthwhile. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's very important as well to get the realistic count, like to, you know, make sure you have the right and not just say, well, we're this. Well, actually, you haven't taken, you know, the whole supply chain into consideration and therefore, uh, you know, not, not having the right calculations. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last, the last, the last um, certification, the most recent one has been this plastic neutral certification. Okay. Um, so for every, because we have to use plastic in the closures for the glass that we that we produce, uh, in the units that we produce, and uh, so for every kilogram of plastic that we use, we recover one kilogram of plastic from the ocean and recycle it. Um, okay. So that's, uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's actually something that I believe that kind of everybody should be doing, really. And are you in collaboration with anyone on that? Is there a company? Yes, 
Yeah, so that's, uh, um, and you know, and yeah, that is, that is, and, and, and the, re the, re the reason I'm hesitating to disclose which partner is because yeah. we, we will be evaluating okay. different partners okay. and, choosing, and choosing which ones are, you, you want know, to do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think if we overcommit with one partner and that partner perhaps turns out to be not really delivering on, yes. the, on, on their promises, then we need to be able to shift partners there. Um, of course, of but course. there are a few. There are a few service providers that offer this exact uh, this exact certification. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And is that like a ten year, or when is your your deadline? Like, when do you want to be neutral, like carbon emission as it, or plastic waste zero, and all of that? When do you plan on? Do you no, have a done. time frame for that, or is it at the no, moment? We're done. Yeah, you're we're done. We're you're neutral done. now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're on both of them. We're neutral already. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. those are, yeah, that's the, and, and, but now I guess the question becomes, when do we become positive and by how much? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if we use a, kid, a kilogram of plastic here, maybe we should be recovering five kilograms from the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, if the company exists to do good, then that should be a no brainer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Interesting. And we will be doing that as soon as cash flow allows. Yeah. Allows, of course, of course, it will, it will. Um, and and your brand ethos, so the work ethic and and um teams, uh, that you know you already radiate sustainability. What good business tip can you share with our members about doing you know business sustainably? I think, you know, I think, I think, I think you need to look at your business and figure out where you can make a difference. Um, you know, if, 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 for example, we'd early on tried to, you know, become, you know, in, in uh, activists in ocean, you know, in, in the establishment of ocean uh, ecosystem protection, I think that it's too big to take on for a small company. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to do what you can well and mm -hmm. not kid yourself that, uh, you know, well, I recycled my plastic cup yesterday. I'm doing my bit, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, it's somewhere in that gray area, <clears throat> gray yeah. area is, you know, where the, where the sweet spot is. I think you've got to do everything you can in mm. your in, in in your company um yeah i'm guessing that your members have very diverse businesses um, absolutely and also i think also maybe being more drastic about it if you're going to say well you know we want to actually be sustainable maybe be more daring more confident um i think that yeah. also helps because you know as you know the situation of the earth is just like and that brings me back to that the first um, question which is the biodiversity so with the loss of that and and climate change you know we've seen drought happening you know and it, also in in South Africa we've seen it in in lots of other countries in in Africa and 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 you also mentioned how these insects and and animals just you know disappear and very difficult to get them back so how does that affect your company uh, with biodiversity loss when that is what you base it on, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've already seen, so we use, uh, we have a community project in Northern Namibia um, in the Konene Desert and it's, and you know, the droughts that have hit there in the last five years have been extreme. Um, and they actually are now impacting on uh, on our ability to source the resurrection plant that we use. Um, it's called Myrothamnus and it lies dormant for years sometimes waiting for rain. But I mean, the last drought, it didn't rain for two and a half years. Okay. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a serious drought, even in a desert. So, um, you know, the, 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 they are, there are climate change impacts um, and it's, you know what we've what we've built there is we've we've uh, we've worked with the 
the Himba tribe to mm -hmm. source this plant sustainably. Um, but and and it's overseen by by an exceptionally good botanist. Um, yeah. Karen not is her name, but the, so she she oversees the sustainability of harvest. But if I mean, if these droughts carry on at this level, it remains to be seen whether or not we're going to be able to continue to use uh, ingredients mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. The last thing I want to be part of is uh, is the unsustainable use of a plant resource. Yeah. Yes. Of course, of course, and and uh, obviously, you know, they, you know, when people are trying to become more stable, they think of, you know, how do they get something else, you know, to to exchange it for what they used to use. But in your case, if it goes the opposite direction, that wouldn't be the way we're looking towards. So um, obviously, those sort of um, like the Himba tribe people you mentioned, they can, they would need then a very strong sort of. Um, support and and investment to help you know sustain um with water especially um yeah. that's crucial to the survival of of this um was it myrothermis plant um yeah yeah we've, we've actually they've also lost huge revenue obviously because tourism has uh has been heavily impacted by COVID. So what we've been doing is helping with donations during this time to keep them going uh, so that, uh, yeah. So that, That's great. Great, great. Well, do send us the link on that. Um, and, and then what is your favorite SE product now that we're here and why? <laughs> And that's hard because I'm always that's using hard. whatever the new shiny thing is out of the laboratory, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, or sometimes, sometimes with, uh, with, yeah, sometimes good, sometimes bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you but, test them on yourself then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, yeah, that that yeah, and look, the probiotic serum is has been the mainstay for a long time now um you know i think i think we're again I, I i did i did mention that i believe we were a little bit lucky coming out of the gates there but uh yeah it has been a really strong product for us and it's the one thing that i still use yeah fantastic fantastic and and and, and is that the probiotic serum is it available in um how many african cities do you know at the moment or can, can people reach get it out of South Africa as well? Definitely available in, yeah, in, yeah, in at least five or six African countries. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So those are, do you know, do you know, do you want to let us know? Uh, I think Nigeria, Botswana, uh, Namibia, Zimbabwe, South Africa. Uh, Sick. Yeah. Anyway, those are, those are the ones that are, that are, <laughs> that are there. Um, Kenyan so which ones well. which ones do you recommend for men which products you know i think men men generally don't use color cosmetics so mm -hmm. you know the cleanser that a guy chooses should be as mild as possible you know the last thing you want to do is go and strip all the sebum off skin um yeah. you know those the oils that your skin produces are extremely valuable um okay. and, and that is the primary food source for the microbes that live on skin and we really need to keep those guys alive and happy yeah because uh, they protect us so uh yeah i guess the i guess the sensitive cleanser would be the best product i believe in that instance and then one of the sensitive moisture moisturizers either hydro or nourish moisturizer yeah yeah to keep them rehydrated yeah yeah okay good 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 we'll have to try okay so as as founder creator and business owner how do you keep your balance between, you know, because I'm sure everyone's listening, they want to know, well, how does he do it? How do you, how do you do this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think it's just persistence, you know, uh, like the, yeah, I don't know. It was just, it just, 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 I, 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 I just haven't given up. I think a lot of people quit when it gets really tough. Um, and I guess, Maybe, 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 you know, maybe I, I guess I could have been persistent and still failed. <laughs> but, but I think, I think just hanging in there is, uh, is, is a quality that I have. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
But yeah, I think that in terms of balance, when it all starts seeming too much, I do go and surf or, or do yoga. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it is. And then from a family point of view, I have a whole lot of kids that keep me semi-sane. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Great. Okay. And if, if there is one thing, uh, clean, green, organic skincare still needs to be developed to the next level, what would you say it should be? Um, you know, yeah, looking, looking at the way the word probiotic is being used in skincare, mm -hmm. uh, I think regulation of that term should come at some point. Um, you know, a probiotic is a live microbe that has a beneficial effect on a person. And, uh, you know, at, at what we're seeing at the moment is just every brand claiming probiotic and, uh, you know, keeping live bacteria in a, in a, you know, keeping them alive over time in a product really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, it's a shame to see that that word is being used so frivolously by the skincare industry when in food, you've got to say, you've got to say this many colony forming units per milliliter. Um, and if you're a probiotic, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be substantial, like billions. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's unfortunate that probiotics being misused. I would like to see the skincare industry start regulating that. And it's the same as organic when organic first started. There were no regulations and kind of everybody just started calling yeah. themselves organic at some yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually. And in some places that's still going on. It's still going on. Yeah. yeah. But you know, in 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 the more in you know in in the sort of developed countries, they've got a very clear definition for organic now, uh, yes. and it is policed. So, I think I think it'd be nice to see the same thing happen with probiotics sooner rather than later. You know? Yeah, yeah, you know? I think so too. I think that would be awesome to really sort of get down to it and know what 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 can we you know what can products do to keep that part of it you know. Um, you know, highly regulated and at the same time certified, like, so that people can know, okay, this is actual, you know, yeah. um, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And, um, um, what new innovations has, uh, <laughs> has SA launched this year and can you let us know what we can expect in the next coming, uh, months or a year <laughs> from now? Or, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we do, we have a, an acne range on the way. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's going to be interesting. We've taken a different, different tack on acne. Um, it's, you know, it's something that affects so many, so many people. Um, and the attitude toward it has been very, single chemical minded in much mm -hmm. the same way as, uh, as, as, treating other other skin issues has been um so i think we've come at that from an interesting angle with live probiotics um right. and uh and some vitamin d boosters so yeah that's that's one thing okay uh, the other thing that we've seen during covid is this uh yeah is a you know our, our competitors in the salon and spa space have shifted towards selling online have shifted toward uh, a more retail type yeah. focus um yeah we're really planning on bedding down with you know in in the salon and spa market um you know so we've built for example, right here is uh, a, a, it's, an, it's our new academy that's just been completed. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna really we're gonna really double down on the therapist channel, and we've got some super interesting innovation for that space, mm -hmm. and we're gonna really invest in in the education side. Um, so, the first course that will run here is a skin microbiome course. Um, okay. So I guess therapists will learn about the skin microbiome and how it can influence uh, skin health and different conditions. Um, Fantastic. 
So yeah. Well, we're very happy to hear that here on this platform for sure. Um, in regards to what is coming uh, from the Academy on Skin Microbe, I'm sure our members would love to be part of that. And especially if it's online, because then, you know, you can reach them um, in other countries as well. And we'd love to, to, to um, be able to give that to them. Um, now, in regards to, um, you mentioned the online and how, you know, the whole pandemic obviously has changed a lot of that. Um, you know, for your salons and uh, the ones you distribute now, do you think that that would be more beneficial to them after, or let's say as we start opening up again, once people have gotten vaccinated, do you think people will still maintain that online shopping uh, as they've done throughout the pandemic? Because I think also there's that feel and need now for people to come back to their salons and to their therapists and to feel you know, that touch and that treatment being done on them, or will they just rather maintain it at home? So if you look at, if you look at uh, how humans have responded to pandemics like this in the past, it's usually been followed by a, a, a drive for, I mean, they've been wild parties and you know I mean it was the roaring 20s that came after the Spanish flu you know it's yeah. uh, I yeah. think the, I think I think humans are humans and humans need touch mm. you know it's separating separating people from each other is the worst form of punishment you know I mean that's that's the that's why you know isolation is the way they treat prisoners yeah. it's uh, so I, I believe that you know once things settle down, I think people will return to salons in a much stronger way than than they were before. Even mm -hmm. uh, so, I think, which is part of the reason that we're doubling down in, in in the industry. I think I think I think the therapist's role is is going to be substantial in the coming years. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm very bullish about the salon and spa industry. I believe that it's uh, it's going to become more and more important rather than less and less. Yes, yes. Well, I'm very excited to hear about uh, the new launches coming from SA uh, from headquarters. You know, with the acne range, I'm sure you'll let us know what month that's coming out, or is that something you want to let us know now? As far as I know, it's September. September. Yeah. Okay, so we can look forward. That's amazing. Um, and then with the vitamin D boosters, and then there's so much coming, guys. I mean, the academy <laughs> therapist, that's just, you must be busy. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this um, half hour on continental conversations with us here in Africa. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks, Elaine. Yeah, thanks for the <laughs> opportunity to talk. Yes, and we definitely hope to see you at our conference in September for sure, um, yeah. where we can hear a lot more about um, the new launches as well and how people can engage and, um, you know, also go online. And, and I, for everyone listening, I mean, really, this is a great product. You should try it, um, even if it's just to see what it feels like. Just go out there and get it. And you've heard what cities and you can definitely um, go to their website. Yeah. Would you like to give us the website here, Trevor? Uh, Sskincare.com. So E-S-S-E -S -S -E skincare.com. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Trevor. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks. <laughs> bye. Keep well. Cheers. Okay, bye.